Now, what would you say if I said I saw a comet with two tails? That'd be weird. What about three tails? This comet had six tails and it stretched across a serious length of the sky. If you take your fist and you put it out in front of you and you do that eight fist lengths, 1744, this comet was known as Comet de Chazot. People feared that it was an omen of doom. Let's take a closer look at this one because I study beams of light. I study strange atmospheric phenomenon going all the way back in history and antiquity where we have seen time and time again pillars of light that are omens of an apocalyptic event or at the very least a cataclysmic one. This right here is a symbol for the god Lao Tian Ye in China during the early 15th century. As you can see, we've got the quote unquote head of the comet or a circular object in the sky with these beams that are coming off of it, these mini tails. We also have, of course, Aten in e Egyptian lore. I believe that this is what I call the apex dome or a portion of the firmament that is revealed every other cycle. Plasma comes down from what people think is a planet or a sun or whatever, and the plasma comes down and it has an effect on life here. This is a, an example of a comet with two tails. The academics will tell you this is a snowball. This is a giant slushy that's flying through space and it's leaving a tail that's like 13 million miles long or some craziness. Uh, this was Hale-Bopp, I believe. Now here's another comet that you guys may never have seen before. It looks like a fish egg. There is no tail or anything. Does this strike you as a comet? How is this even possible? In modern academics, this is supposed to be like a solid object that is leaving a trail of whatever behind it. And so nothing should be in front of the physical object. And yet we just have an aura of light all the way around it, just in a circle. These are examples of aberrations within optics. These are different things that the lens of your eye can do whenever the light that's passing through the lens of your eye hits an anomaly. It creates these aberrations or points of focus that are out of focus. This one right here is that comet. It's called a spherical aberration. These comatic aberrations, as you can see here, what's happening is that the light that passes through the firmament, it is acting abnormally and hitting places it doesn't normally hit, which are inconsistencies in the dome, in the firmament itself, and therefore it causes these aberrations. Here's an ancient Chinese drawing when they documented the different, the different types of comets, comets with multiple tails, and oftentimes these tails actually had branches that came up off of them. Now this is an alchemical drawing of something very similar. We see these beams of light up in the heavens that all reach up to this circular object or in reality, this dome. But the light beams are coming out of mountains. Let's count how many mountains there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mountains with light being emitted from them. These are what I call plasma volcanoes, which is basically every volcano, uh, every other cycle. We have these plasma volcanoes over here on the edge. You can see this one's hollowed out. People are in inside of this hollow mountain working and mining because this is an area where this is located. I'll tell you right now, this is called the Septentrion or the Septentrio. You can find this on many, if not every, ancient map, uh, at, at the very least going back into the Middle Ages, but even in recent times. They still refer to this as the Septentrio. The word Septen means seven. And it's also interesting too, you can see the symbols for the planets on each one of these mountains. So seven, Septen, Trio, it actually comes from the Proto-Indo-European root word meaning Deru, which means trees. Okay, so for example, we've got these mountains, which act as the base of these cosmic trees or these trees that emit light. These are the trunks of the trees. The tree themselves, the tree itself, is the beam of light that shoots up and then branches out as it gets uh, higher up into the heavens. There are seven of those seven main ones that surround a circular island at the North Pole, which I believe to be Hyperborea and the Garden of Eden. So we have these seven light pillars known as the Septentrion at the North Pole, shooting light straight up and straight up above that place on the firmament is the apex dome, the place where the dome depressurizes and the firmament breaks open. So here we have another example of these lights in the sky. Right? So here's another example you can see. I'll pull it down. You've got the sun over here and the moon is over here. So what is that central circular object with the name of Yahweh or the Tetragrammaton written inside of it? It is neither the sun nor the moon. It is an ancient 
uh, light source that we don't have in our world today, but it will return one day. Here we have the seven beams once more shooting straight up to a central point in the sky. This is the Septon Trio. Here's another alchemical drawing that features the seven mountains or the Septon Trio. Uh, as you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and Hermes right above it. The name Hermes means, um, well, it means Har, which means mountain, and then Mesh, which means out of the water. So a mountain that comes up out of the water. Hermes represents the central mountain in Hyperborea at the middle of that paradise-like island or continent, basically. That central mountain is Hermes. It is the mountain that comes up out of the water or is born out of the water and gives birth to that light that shoots high up into the uh, to the heavens. Now, that's represented by Hermes's staff here. The staff is just a beam, but it's got these snakes that wrap around it. This is plasma, and these, these are the circuits. Um, this is the electrical circuit of the plasma and the energy that is going up and down on the central beam or Jacob's ladder. Now, Usually, Hermes is depicted pointing this staff upwards, right? Um, but in this picture, he's pointing it downwards. And we don't see light coming up out of these seven mountains or the Septon Trio. We see what appears to be water going downwards and then emptying out into this hole in the ground or this bottomless, bottomless pit that's full of uh, fire. It's because this alchemical drawing, you can see the, the sun over here, the moon over here. This alchemical drawing depicts a time whenever those beams of light or the age of light came to an end and the light went down or retracted into the earth to charge once more, which is what we see here. Uh, here's another uh, book. This is called A Key to Physics and the Occult Sciences. And you can see over here that they have drawn you a version of Mount Maru. It's a cave but it, it's actually a cave that goes down into the earth. This is the top of Mount Maru. They've messed with the perspective to, so that they can show you what's what's on the land, but they have brought the cave upwards so that you can see that it goes down into the earth. Now, this also has those beams of light with Hermes, once again, pointing his staff upwards because the beams of light are going upwards. And if I make it a little darker, we can actually count out those beams of light. Once more, we find that there are seven of them. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the seven mountains or the Septon Trio that surround Mount Maru. This is an example of Mount Maru. Mount Maru is the black mountain. It is a magnetic mountain, and it is oftentimes symbolized by a wolf that howls straight up at the moon. We know that wolves don't howl at the moon. Where does that come from? It comes from a mountain that is split at the top which is because it's a volcano, basically. Um, but it's a split mountain, and it's a dark mountain, and right above it is the apex dome, which projects its own image into our sky, giving us the moon, basically. Now, if we draw in the seven beams of light that surround Hyperborea, or the Garden of Eden, these, these uh, seven beams of light, they also help to make uh, a sort of electromagnetic barrier around the island, which acts as um, like a force field, basically like a plasma Ouroboros, right? So this is what we get. We get these beams of light that are all directly under the apex dome at the North Pole. 